Hey, it's Give to the Max Day, and guess what? Really, don't forget about Butter City. We're here putting shows on the air, interviewing awesome filmmakers and artists in the film industry because we care and we want you to be able to hear their stories. But we can't do any of that unless you support us so that we can support them. So if you give money today with Give to the Max, it's going to be awesome and really help us out. Check us out. We can check out our shows at www.buttercity.com. We're on Facebook and we tweet. But remember, it's all because of you that we're able to do this so that you can see it on there. So please, just remember us today. Welcome folks to the Filmmaker event here. Welcome to Butter City, the show all about filmmaking with a Minnesota twist. Today we have filmmaker Matt Osterman and producer Jennifer Kramer. And we're going to be talking about your recent film that you just like premiered and it's having a lot of success and it's out on Netflix and it's called Ghost from the Machine. So how, let's go back to the conception you know, of, of the Twin Cities Film Festival. Where was the, the first spark of, when, when was the twinkle in the eye of the creator? Um, I can truly say that one night I was literally sleeping and I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, I think we need a major mainstream festival here in town that caters to the general audience. So I started doing my research and I went to other film festivals in town here. They're all amazing. They all cater to certain niches, which is amazing as well. And then um, Bill and I were on a set together. Like I said, I was an actor. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. Bill and I got to talking and uh, I, I told him a little secret. What's the secret, Bill? Well, he... Yeah. <laughs> I've got it. Jesus Christ, John, I've got an answer. And the question is? Nicole. Again? No sex for Lent. For 40 days. If I can do that, then everything will be okay. This is her place now. How can it be? You can let it be. I am married. In my heart, I believe. And when you're happy, I feel the sun through a cloud. Did you know that you wanted to eventually do some music videos? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to have grown up um, you know, in the 90s and the 80s and not be influenced by music videos. I mean, I think it's all over. I mean, you see it everywhere now, and I don't necessarily think that's a good thing, but, um, you know, I mean, I grew up, I love music. Um, the, one of my teachers was a music video instructor, and uh, particularly, I basically just do music videos for bands I really like, and so it kind of works out that way. If you've never tried snowmobiling before, now's your chance. For the next two weeks, manufacturers will be offering free rides and see what it's like. So come on up to the Northwoods and give snowmobiling a chance. Six stuff, great okay. hair. Okay, painful, painful, painful to look at, honestly. I thought the stuff when you were on the snowmobile was gonna for sure be like a clip from America's Funny Home <laughs> Videos. You just go bam right into something. It was before wireless microphones. That so nice... you know, I had to throw it and we practiced a couple times and it actually worked. That guy was actually filming and he caught it at the same time, which is pretty good. I started playing music when I was nine years old. We used the term fall in love with it. No. No, I, I can't right now. I'm on my way. I'm gonna need mom to come get me. The prairie is still in me, in my talk and in my manners. I go back there now and then to gaze into the rivers I envied for flowing off to places I thought I would never see. And I, I really consider myself um, an artist more than um, somebody who's a director or producer, even though those are things that I do that I do do. But I feel like the process of filmmaking is a spiritual experience. You know, my first, you do what it takes to get your first film made. I mean, I. I drove the grip truck. You know, I remember that. And parked it in my, in my driveway every night. So, I mean, you do what it takes to get your first film made. So, just to kind of start with a little bit of history, let's talk about 
how you got in the film business. I mean, you started with commercials, but how did you even get in into that? I um, I actually uh, I think I got into the film business by picking up dog poop. Um, is that is that really where you saw yourself when you were in film school? I think everybody that I went to film school with was going to be a director. Right. Well, I mean, that... you know, I I always was interested in history and criticism, but I was the person who would organize. Uh, film screenings or I would get people together for uh, film society and even in film school people were saying to me you would be a good producer. You know after you were in the, the film world for a while you ended up making you know the, the film uh, Half Past Autumn mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about Gordon Parks mm -hmm. um, and you know listening to you is you can hear the relationship to your you know how you think about filmmaking and, and kind of why this project would be a really great fit for you. Well, I think it comes from my mother. I mean, point blank, my mother used to say, you know, you should, I always knew about Gordon Parks. It wasn't a time that I didn't know about Paul Robeson, Gordon Parks, or Duke Ellington. So, I know that you've been, you mean, you've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, take us back to the early years in Matt's life. So, okay. when, when did you first decide that this was, that filmmaking was where you wanted to go? It's been, um, I've been doing this professionally for just about 20 years um, and then before that um, I sort of got the bug at a cable access facility so it's fitting that we're shooting here at SPNN so cable access has been in my blood for a long time and kind of getting you know the hands on the gear and the hands on the ability to distribute something immediately was pretty intoxicating for me. Some of your first films you came out of was it uh, what was the cable company you came out of? Well, it was called Continental Cable, okay. uh, and it was actually not far from where you are here in St. Paul. It was in the uh, Union Depot. It provided all of the same things that cable TV did, all of the uh, various services, but they also did a lot of their own local origination programming. So they had a big studio, yeah, and they produced lots of shows, um, and that's where I got my start, doing documentaries. <laughs> You out of popcorn? You're not out of Butter City. Check us out, Film Movies Minnesota. Check out our website, buttercity.com. And please remember, it's only possible because you support us. Please give. So we need people that love film, watch film, make film, on the show talking about film. We're all about it. You should watch. Please go to givemn.org, check out Butter City, become part of the team today.